from Lagos, the nation's commercial capital. This is the News at 10. Live from the channel's television. Reporting tonight, Ayotunde Balogo. Tonight, a busy day for the president as he visits Adamawa and Kano states, commiserates with family of elder statesmen in Yola. Mammoth crowd welcome him in Kano. Federal government team and resident doctors resume talks at the directive of the president to settle all matters out of court and as soon as possible. Two first class traditional rulers will be ascending the throne tomorrow. 21st Ulu of Wari Omoba Shola Emiko and the second Emir of Bichi Al Haji Nasiru Adobayero. And US President Joe Biden vows to evacuate Americans and US allies as Kabul airport chaos continues. Plus, we have business, sports, news from Abuja, and later international news from our London studio. On business news tonight, three tiers of government received 760.71 billion naira as FAC allocation in July. And on sports news tonight, it's another medal for Nigeria at the Under-20 World Athletics Championship as Chineterm Namdi becomes the first Nigerian in history to win a World Under-20 medal in javelin. From Abuja, federal government to resume second phase for mass metering program to tackle the challenge of estimated billing by discos. We start off from Nigeria's northeast and in Adamawa state hosted the President Mohamed Buhari today as he visited the family of his close friend and elder statesman Ahmed Joda who passed away last week. On arrival at the Yola International Airport, here he was received by the governor of Adamawa State, Governor Umaru Fintiri, and other dignitaries. The president took a first stop at the palace of Lamido of Adamawa, Muhammadu Aliu Barkindo. Thereafter, President Buhari proceeded to condole with the Ahmed Joda family. President Mohamed Buhari arrives at the Yola International Airport at about 10.40 in the morning and was received by officials of the Adamawa State Government, led by Governor Omaru Fintiri. From here, the Governor accompanies him to the palace of the Lamido of Adamawa, where he was received by the Lamido, Dr. Barikindo Mustafa. <laughs> The president is in the state to commiserate with the families of three prominent sons of the state, including elder statesman Al-Haji Ahmed Joda, a former minister of commerce and industry, Dr. Mahmoud Tukor, and a former minister of animal health and northern Cameroon's affairs in the defunct northern region government, Al-Haji Abdullahi Jada. The only thing we can say at the moment is thank you, because what I've been the one to you in Abuja because our leader collected Ahmed Joda and uh, the family of uh, Mahmoud are your personal friends and uh, we give it to come and condone because even though we have a type of national pleasure and also today your son your first son we get him the families of the elder statesmen were among the dignitaries at the palace as the president, who spoke in Hausa language, pours eulogies on the prominent sons of the state, noting their contributions to national development. The Kaina Akam and Nigeria, the Mutan Adama Sibuja.
As the president departs the state, residents are appreciative of the president for finding time to commiserate with them. Gloria Umezuki, Channel Television News. After leaving Yolali, President then proceeded to Kano to attend the much-anticipated wedding between the daughter of the Emir of Bichi, Al-Haji Nasir Adubayero, Zara, and Yusuf, the President's son. The wedding took place in Kano on Friday at the Bichi Emirate Palace. The event had in attendance former President Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, Vice President Professor Yemir Shibajo, diplomats, politicians, and other distinguished personalities. The sign of the quality of the wedding began from the Aminu Kano International Airport, where fleets of private jets dot the tarmac. Fast forward to the venue, the Bichi Palace of the First Class Emirates Council, recently created by the Kano State Government, where high-profile guests of different persuasions have come to share in the joy of the Buhari and Adobayero families. The groom's father, President Buhari, flanked by former Nigerian president, Muhammadu Isofu, proudly sit to pay the dowry. That done, guests stay back for what would become a befitting lunch. It also provides a chance to catch up with old friends. It may also have been a perfect event to mend fences. Ahead of the coronation of the Emir of Bichi Al Haji Nasir Adu Bayero in Kano tomorrow, a coronation lecture has been held in his honor. The lecture, convened by the Governor of Kano State, Governor Abdullah Ganduje, is aimed at encouraging young people in the face of digitalized generation and bringing development down to the grassroots. <laughs> The lecture with the theme, Physical Education in the Service of Local Administration and Grassroots Societal Development, had in attendance distinguished personalities and government officials as the event seeks to empower young people in the face of a digitalized generation and bring development down to the grassroots. We create a small additional emirate, which emirate council inclusive, and this has resulted immensely in achieving tremendous development in various aspects of our people's life. Governor Omar Gandhi reinstates his explanations for the creation of more emirates in the state. Another reason why we created the emirates is to develop many cities, small cities, that will complement the responsibilities and the services rendered by our mega and digital canoe city. I'm happy to see that our the headquarters of this Emirates are already taking new shape in terms of development. I'm sure those of you who were not here for many years in Bichi, if you go around Bichi, you know that the captain of an Emirate has come to stay. Mm. The host of the lecture, Emir of Bichi, says he is happy with the lineup of activities for his coronation. The celebration is coming with three things in the mind of the people of Bichi the presentation of staff of office, the wedding of the daughter of the Emir, and the training of these students. Chairman of the event, the Sultan of Sokoto, pledges his support for the communication sector. That is the power of communication. And that's what Isa Ali Pantami is trying to set straight in this country. And we support him and we continue to support him. Some youths were awarded certificate of information technology and it is expected that they would make the best use of the knowledge acquired. 
It's expected to be a big day in the oil-rich city of Wari Delta State tomorrow as the 21st Ulu of Wari designate ascends the throne of his forefathers. The mood of the people is that of celebration as they look forward to tomorrow. In the meantime, the Ulu of Wari designate made an appearance with his children in Wari South South Nigeria, acknowledging cheers from his people. The 37-year-old Omaba Shola Emiko, who is the son of the 19th Ulu of Wari Ogame, Atuashi will be the 21st Uru of Wari following the passing of the 20th Ogame in Kenwali the first. We can confirm that a lot of A-grade dignitaries have already stormed the city for the big event. Former Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf has met with Nigeria's former President Dr. Goodluck Jonathan in Abuja. During the meeting, she expressed concern about rising political tensions in some West African states ahead of general elections. Addressing journalists after the closed-door meeting at President Jonathan's office, Mrs. Johnson Sirleaf notes that there is an urgent need for all former West African presidents to close ranks and midwife smooth transition of political powers in the region. She also told journalists about the need to mentor more African women in order to help them get more political recognition. We have so many tensions in our countries today. We have so many elections coming up. Uh, we all want to see the kind of uh, smooth transition that he ushered, he, he promoted, and I ushered, you know, to, to ensure peace and stability. So. My visit here provided the opportunity. I used the opportunity of being here to brief him on my program. I established a Center for Women in Development, and I came to let him know that uh, the objective of that is to promote women to the ascendancy of higher positions in public service. And we started that, and we, we already have uh, many dynamic women who have achieved certain levels of position in their societies but aspire to do more. Uh, and they, we work with them and they work with uh, women who have already excelled, like former women presidents, like I am. And we work with these women to be able to help them with their strategies, to give them advice when when they feel they, they've reached obstacles or they want to something. And so I wanted him to know about this as an initiative and to call upon him uh, to see himself as a strong supporter of women as he's already established a record in this regard. The resident doctors in Nigeria today resumed talks with the federal government team at the conference hall of the Labour Ministry. The Minister of Labour and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngege, told Channels Television in Abuja that the decision to reconvene the meeting follows the directive by the President that all matters relating to the doctor's strike must be settled out of court. As we speak, talks are still ongoing between the government delegation and the resident doctors. We are following the situation closely and we will bring you an update as they unfold. While the resident doctors began their nationwide indefinite strike on August the 2nd this year to press home their demand, for the implementation of the Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, it entered into with the federal government in March this year on welfare and other issues that affect members, namely payment of the COVID-19 inducement hazard allowance, domestication of Residency Training Act, as well as proper placement of doctors on the salary scale and regularization of the appointment of resident doctors. The Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Labor and Employment. In part two after the break, all progressive Grand Alliance ABGA celebrates the return of its candidate for the Anambra governorship elections in November. Do join us again.
Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channels Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. A busy day for President Mohamedou Buhari as he visits Adamawa and Kano states. Two first-class traditional rulers to ascend their thrones tomorrow. The 21st Oluwawari Olua of Shola Emiko in Delta State and the second Emir of Bichi al Haji Nasser Adir Bayero in Kano State. And U.S. President Joe Biden assures U.S. citizens and allies of a safe evacuation out of Afghanistan. The United States government has evacuated its citizens that are schooling in the University of Joss, Plata State, back to the state following the breach of peace in some parts of uh, uh, the state in Plata, which resulted in loss of lives, maiming, and destruction of property. Uh, the state government said the action became necessary as the security situation has compelled the university management to suspend the second semester examinations for the 2019-2020 academic session. Worried about the well-being of her citizens and for them not to be left stranded, as well as become victims of circumstances, the state government, through the Commissioners for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, as well as Tertiary Education, Science and Technology, made arrangements for vehicles and security personnel to ensure safe evacuation and return of the students. Now, the students of the University of Jos had called on the federal and Plata state governments to provide adequate security for students and staff of the university in view of the security breaches that have been responsible for loss of students' lives in reprisals. In Asha State, five farmers in a Toro village of Modakake have been killed by gunmen in the early hours of today. The incident has sparked tension in that area, which is known to be volatile. However, a call for calm has been made by the police as investigations has already commenced. A spokesperson of the police command in Ocean State, Yemisi Okpalala, says police officers have been deployed to forestall any reprisal attack that will lead to the breakdown of law and order. The leadership of the Christian Association of Nigeria and the Jamaatu Nasr Islam in Nasarawa State have condemned the killing of travelers in Jos, the Plata State capital. The two groups made the condemnation in a press briefing after a meeting in Lafia, which had the deputy governor of the state, Emmanuel Akabe, and the police commissioner, Additional Shuyemi, in attendance. They also sued for peace among the ethnic and religious nationalities of the state. It will no longer be business as usual for bandits in Sokoto State as the newly posted General Officer Commanding the 8th Division Nigerian Army Headquarters Major General Uembasi is promising to fight criminal activities. The new GOC was speaking when he paid a courtesy call on the State Governor Aminu Tambual who pleaded with him to deploy more personnel and equipment to the state. Without security you have nothing. And without economic development, there cannot be security. So these two sides of the same coin, it is where we know that we are going to do our work effectively, professionally, to enable the good people of this zone, particularly Sokoto State, to go about their normal duties without let or hindrance. And then for the bad people that want to bring the economic activities of the state and indeed the region, to a standstill, the military and other security agencies will do its utmost to checkmate and reduce this kind of problems in the region, particularly monetary activities and other criminalities. We are coming at a time when all of us are feeling really very challenged, especially in view of the uh, resurgence of um, Banditing in eastern part of the state. We have been very worried, we've been very disturbed with the situation, and um, we are looking up to you, up to God Almighty, for solution and for you to actually uh, arrest and revive uh, that very ugly threat. We don't know how, obviously, it's clear we don't know how now. Really very important to get more techniques, more uh, equipment, and, 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 and uh, importantly also 
religion of the of the of the fire power, both uh, the ground forces and the air force. The two bodies have been recovered in Potiskum community in Yobe state, believed to be victims who drowned last Sunday as a result of heavy flooding. They were recovered in Dawasa community, that's 40 kilometers from the flood scene. Executive Secretary, Yobe State Emergency Management Agency, Dr. Mohamed Goje, says his agency's search and rescue team have been working to ensure those affected are properly taken care of, and that several households affected by the flood have been provided with temporary shelter and food assistance. He further explains about 250 households in Potiskum and 249 in Nguru local government councils were affected by the recent flood. Five people were killed in the flooding incident in Potiskum last Sunday. Well, the U.S. Agency for International Development Office Transition Initiative has built 10 new houses for the Fulani herders in Gwandara and renovated 10 other damaged houses for Kataf natives of Ungwanbido community, both in Jamal local government area of Kaduna State. And the two communities were enmeshed in crisis last year, whereby many lives were lost and houses destroyed in the incident. On all progressives' ground lines, has inaugurated a committee to execute the campaign for, of its governorship candidate, Professor Charles Soludo. And while the state governor, Willie Obiano, inaugurated the committee, the governorship candidate in the November elections, Professor Charles Soludo promised to push the poverty rate further down. A P G A. A P G A. Loyalists of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, in their numbers, gather at the Alex Ekwemi Square in Oka, in Anambra State. It's the formal inauguration of the party's 2021 campaign council. The team is charged with ensuring that its candidate, Professor Charles Saludo, takes over the governorship seat come November 2021. But first, a word of thanks for coming through to victory in the courts. What happened in Owere yesterday was simple. We applied that Abuga be joined, that Abuga Victoria be joined, and that the, the court should give away the leave to appeal. And those two requests were granted by the court. End of discussion. The truth of the matter is that Apuka is indestructible. All the people we have interacted with, everybody wants Apuka to win. And our party works have always been through that committee. Let us put our eyes on the ball. The only option we have is for everybody to come back here. Let us work for the victory of Afghan. The party's governorship candidate in the forthcoming election also pledges to raise the bar of governance in the state if elected. Poverty level in Anambra in 2010 was 53%. Anambra state under Apuga. The poverty rate has come down to 14.78%. In the Apuga, this is my best opportunity to express my gratitude to all of you for choosing me to fly the flag of uh, Africa. Africa National Campaign Council. His then the formal inauguration of members. Thank you. The campaign committee has promised to do everything possible to deliver on its mandate, which is to ensure that its candidate becomes the next governor of Anambra State. The spiritual leader. Federal High Court sitting in Port Harcourt, River State, has reserved ruling on an application brought before it by the Federal Inland Revenue Service seeking to stop the enforcement of a court judgment over the right of the River State government to collect value-added tax, VAT. Justice Stephen Dalio Pam of the Federal High Court had last week ruled that the River State government and not the Federal Inland Revenue Service is entitled to collect value-added tax and personal income tax in the territory of River State. The judgment was delivered in a suit filed by the Attorney General of River State against the Federal Inland Revenue Service and the Attorney General of the Federation. 
Not satisfied with last week's judgment, the FIRS then approached an appeal court to challenge the ruling. While the appeal is still on, the Revenue Collection Agency has now returned to the same Federal High Court in Port Harcourt where the judgment was delivered to seek a stay of execution of the decision of the court pending the determination of their appeal. Well, the argument, as usual, is that they are on appeal and therefore the valid judgment of this court should not be obeyed. And uh, we find that a bit curious and we had converse argument in opposition to their uh, position. Besides, uh, the law does not permit a vacuum. Uh, the value added tax law of River State has come into operation. You cannot have a situation where the court haven't declared that the Federal Inland Revenue Services cannot collect VAT in River State. The state itself cannot collect same thing. I mean, that would be anarchic. So, uh, the court took the arguments and uh, reserved ruling. What we have just done now is uh, legal gymnastics that lawyers often engage in in the courtroom. That's all. We have just advocated our respective positions before the court. So it is for the court now to look at our arguments, look at the facts we have placed before it, and take a position one way or the other. When the News at 10 returns, federal government to kick off mass metering program to tackle the challenge of estimated billing by discos. Do join us again. Welcome back. Security may be getting a boost with the inauguration of a newly constructed structure and residential buildings at the Area 8 Command of the Nigeria Police situated in Agbo, Ika South local government area of Delta State. It's made possible by the Jim Ovia Foundation. The facility, which was officially inaugurated by the Delta State Governor Ifai Okowa today, was born out of the organization's desire to contribute to the peace and security of the state. The ancient city of Agbo in Ika South local government area of Delta State today hosts dignitaries including Governor of Delta State Ifani Okoa, security personnel, management and staff of the Jim Ovia Foundation and Zenith Bank as they arrive to formally witness and officially inaugurate this edifice newly constructed for the officers of the Area 8 Police Command. After the protocols, Governor Ifuan Yokoa, accompanied by other guests, heads straight to the assignment of the day, and that's cutting the tape and officially declaring open for use the police station and other facilities. <laughs> Adequate security can only thrive through collaborative effort, and that's what inspires this gesture. It's simply because we want to cooperate, we want to collaborate with the police and armed forces, because it's very important that the environment, the indigenous, are secured, are protected. Governor Okoa loads the Jim Ovia Foundation and Zenith Bank for responding to the need to improve security by delivering this project as the police and leaders of the host communities are grateful. They promise to make judicious use of these facilities. I think he has provided the enabling environment for the police here in this command to function uh, appropriately and adequately and uh, it, it is something very good for our security. We cannot thank him enough. What you have seen here, it's not a chance play. This in itself will further spur our more, I mean our men to perform more. Our son, Jimovia, promised to build this place. And today you and I were here now to commission him. We give glory to God and we thank him so much for fulfilling his promise and he's done it well. The management of Zenith Bank says continuous delivery of relevant and impactful corporate social responsibility projects will continue to drive their overall strategy. 
uh, we are involved in uh, supporting uh, the security reforms and making donations to uh, improving security like what we've just seen that Jumovia Foundation has done. The way we see it is not really about making money alone. It's about giving back to the community. At a time when the nation is faced with challenges of insecurity, gestures such as this should be encouraged to help security agencies discharge their duties more efficiently. All right, let's head over to the nation's capital of Abuja, where Malpe Ogun Yusuf is standing by. Malpe, over to you. Hello, Ayo. Well, we'll start with something to chair. If the billing for power consumption in your home is currently being estimated, this story may warm your heart. This is because the federal government will soon commence the second phase of its national mass metering program, the NMMP. The project is expected to drastically reduce estimated billing by discos that will ensure consumers are billed according to the electricity they consume. Under the second phase of the program, the government plans to install 4 million meters free of charge in household and business premises that are currently unmetered. The first phase was launched later than expected in December 2020 owing to the COVID-19 pandemic with a target of 1 million meters across the country. As we speak, 750,000 meters have been delivered to discos in just under eight months. And to security matters, officers of the Nigerian Navy and the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps have intercepted suspected vandals while they were trying to load petroleum products into 33,000 liter trucks. They were caught during a joint operation carried out in the Barua area of Ikbaja, Lagos State, in the process of loading the first of four trucks. The Lagos State Commandant and SCDC, Okoro Iweka, says the vandals escaped from the scene. Early morning joint operation in Barua community, Alimosho local government area of Lagos State. The vicinity has been cordoned off, movement of residents restricted, and youth in the area watch to know the next line of action. Still a danger zone, a naked pumping valve with three long hoses for fast loading. Already, a 33,000 litre tanker has been loaded with three others lined up. The flag officer commanding Western Naval Command arrives. He's briefed on the operations by the vandals. Unfortunately, when our men approached, uh, they all absconded. So we were able to just uh, get hold of their trucks and the appliances they used. If you, if you look back at the pit, you see that uh, it takes some technical skill and enormous resources to muster this for this kind of operation. So it appears like it's a syndicated uh, activity uh, on our own part. We'll continue to pursue the perpetrators, at least to know those who are sponsoring this, uh, this illegal act. We will take it to court and do appropriately what is needed for them, forfeit the product, forfeit the trucks to the federal government. We will not allow this uh, unscrupulous element to put the court to shame. We will keep on stepping ahead of them and we will put our men, we have the intelligence group and other groups who will assist in curbing this vandalization as far as Lagos is concerned. Barua environment is becoming a safe haven for vandals. And all is left in the hands of security agencies to rejig their strategies and end illegal operations in that axis. In developmental matters, Nuru Nigeria, a non-governmental organization, is helping about 15,000 vulnerable farming groups and over 2,000 households to improve their livelihoods in Adamawa State. The unveiling of the Basic Sustainability Livelihoods Program, funded by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, took place in Yola, the Adamawa State capital. Strengthening the resilience of rural communities affected by insurgency in Adamawa State and to help them break out of the shackles of poverty and build resilience in their communities is the primary objective of Nuru Nigeria. With the disruption of livelihoods by insurgency, 
and communal conflicts, most of these communities look out for lifelines. This is the reason for this intervention by Nuru Nigeria, a non-governmental organization established to help affected vulnerable communities to build sustainability and strengthen livelihoods. With the current security situation in the country, the food crisis, and especially with the renewed effort of the government of Nigeria, as it has recently committed to strengthening our agriculture and nutrition sectors in order to achieve food security and generate a broad-based growth through the implementation of agriculture promotion policy. We really thank Nuru Nigeria for helping us farmers with seeds, training us for building sustainable livelihood in Nigeria. We really appreciate their efforts with their assistance to us, more especially in our community, Delicium, Michigan local government. Gathered in this hall, are stakeholders drawn from the three benefiting local government areas of Michika, Hong and Gombi of Adamawa State, including representatives of farming groups, donor agencies and officials of the Adamawa State Government to unveil the program. We help provide material support in the beginning, of, we help get them started. We also help them get third party accounting, third party evaluation, third party legal support so that they're prepared to be a world-class organization and take it to scale um, with partners like USAID. The activities of Nuru Nigeria Limited will go a long way in the reviving their means of livelihood and also encourage them to go back to their host communities, engage in farming as a means of their livelihood and also improve their economic activities. BSL will work to establish and promote a safe, affordable and easy to access financial service platform for rural farmers that will serve as a risk reserve against economics, environment and social shocks. Well, that's all from Abuja. But we have more news on how the markets fared today with Teniola Shubawali standing by for business news. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thanks a lot, Marco. Welcome to Business News. A total of 760.717 billion naira revenue for July 2021 has been distributed by the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee among the federal, states and local government councils. The amount represents a 27 billion naira increase compared to 733.09 billion naira shared in June. The total amount distributed comprises of the statutory revenue value added tax and exchange gain. A further breakdown of the total revenue shows that the federal government received 321.22 billion naira, while the states and local governments received 222.51 and 166.56 billion naira, respectively. Also, about 50.41 billion naira was allocated to the relevant states as 13% derivation revenue. The central bank has threatened to revoke the licenses of microfinance banks carrying out foreign exchange transactions in the country. The financial regulator is alleging that microfinance banks are engaged in non-permissible activities, which also include wholesale banking. These activities directly contravene the revised regulatory and supervisory uh, guidelines for microfinance banks in Nigeria 2012. The CBN has therefore asked microfinance banks to strictly focus on providing financial services to retail consumers. The equities market pulled back in today's trade as the All Share Index slipped by 0.47%. Laddie Williams tells us more. couldn't sustain yesterday's appearance in the local equities market the final trading day of the week the all share index shaved off almost half a percent on the activity chart uh, over 4,000 deals were done with 280.57 million shares uh, valued at 3.18 billion 
Uh, to the list of top trades, you see stocks of Honeyflower uh, led the chart as the most traded by volume, followed by GTCO and Jai's Bank. Over to the gainers counter now. We see uh, Lasaco, Nemeth, and UACN in the green, while FTN Cocoa Processors led the losers counter, closing at 40 Cobra, followed by University Press and Cadbury. It's a positive market breath with 22 gainers to 15 losers. Quite a tussle between the bear and the bull this week. Let's see what happens next week. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Laddie Williams. It's back to you. Thanks a lot, Laddie. Well, let's take a look at the closing numbers in the global market. And that's business news tonight. It's back to Ayo for the rest of the news at 10. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thank you so much, Taniola. As desperation grows for those still stranded in Afghanistan, U.S. President Joe Biden has promised to evacuate all remaining Americans and U.S. allies. Speaking at the White House, Mr. Biden said the U.S. had evacuated 13,000 people to date in what he called one of the most difficult airlift operations in history. Let's head over to our London studios where Simon Pusey has more on this and other international news in Around the World in Five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The United States has evacuated around 3,000 more people from Afghanistan's Kabul airport, according to a White House official bringing the U.S. evacuations tally to about 9,000 since August the 14th. Gunshots were reportedly fired by U.S. and Afghan special forces as civilians tried to storm Kabul airport on Thursday night, according to an eyewitness who filmed the chaotic scenes. <laughs> Residents continue to flee the country. Footage shows thousands of Afghans, including many women and children, waiting outside Kabul airport and planes taking off with sounds of shouting in the background. More than 18,000 people have been flown from Kabul since the Taliban took over the capital, according to NATO. While the Taliban have declared that they will not seek revenge, a UN document has warned that they are searching for people who worked for NATO forces or the previous Afghan government. They also recently tortured and killed several members of the long-persecuted Hazara minority. In an interview given in the political office in Qatar, Sahel Shaheen, the Taliban spokesperson, has said they want to form an inclusive government. Uh, it is a vacuum, vacuum of, of power. There is uh, no time for any kind of election, uh, the, there is uh, no constitution, a new constitution will be um, drafted and then approved. So this needs a lot of uh, work, uh, but uh, that work will be done uh, later. But um, right now, uh, uh, it is, there is a need to have an Afghan inclusive government. Mm. So of course, uh, through talks with these personalities and, um, and politicians, and deliberation among our top leadership and among ourselves, uh, those person, uh, persons uh, will be uh, selected. The lockdown in Australia's capital, Sydney, has been extended until the end of September to slow the spread of COVID-19. <laughs> Authorities have also imposed a curfew on two million residents in the city's worst hit suburbs. Residents of Sydney have been under stay-at-home orders since late June. However, infections have more than doubled in the past week, with 642 new cases recorded on Friday and 681 on Thursday. Foreign food aid has finally arrived in Haiti's rural areas in the southwest of the country, days after a major earthquake killed at least 2,189 people and reduced tens of thousands of buildings to rubble. Hundreds of people lined up to receive provisions from the UN World Food Programme at a camp in the rural town of Camp Perrin for people displaced by Saturday's earthquake. 
The head of the United States Humanitarian Agency has said aid workers will run out of food this week for millions in need in Ethiopia's conflict-ravaged Tigray region. For the first time in nine months of war, aid workers won't be able to provide food for millions of people in need of humanitarian aid. The United Nations Secretary General has again called for an immediate ceasefire in the Ethiopian region of Tigray, where government forces and rebel fighters have been locked in conflict since November. The death toll in the attack on civilians and military personnel in northern Burkina Faso has climbed to at least 80, that's according to local government. The attack happened on Wednesday when Islamist militants raided a convoy being escorted by military police. Security forces have said at least 80 militants were also killed. A woman has been found clinging to a dinghy off the Canary Islands, the only survivor of a crossing that's feared to have killed 52 people. She was spotted around 220 kilometers off the island in a poor state by a passing merchant ship and was saved by the emergency services. She was taken to hospital suffering from severe dehydration. Two other bodies were found by the Coast Guard and the woman told the rescuers that more than 50 other people had been on board. Angela Merkel and Russian President Vladimir Putin have held talks in Moscow for the final time before the German Chancellor steps down. She was presented with flowers by the Russian president in the Kremlin. They're expected to discuss the crisis unfolding in Afghanistan and Russia's treatment of opposition politician Alexei Navalny. And finally, Elon Musk has announced that Tesla is aiming to launch the prototype of a humanoid robot called TeslaBot next year. The TeslaBot will be real. The billionaire entrepreneur said the robot would eliminate dangerous, repetitive and boring tasks and that his company already had the key ingredients to make the robot. TeslaBot will be designed with an AI system allowing it to perform a wide range of tasks from attaching a bolt to a car to doing the groceries. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos. Welcome to Sports News. Team Nigeria has won its second medal at the ongoing World Athletics Under-20 Championships. Chi Nimerim Namdi clinched a bronze medal in the men's javelin, become the first Nigerian athlete in 19 years to win a field event medal at the championships since Esther Agatise won in long jump event in 2002. Meanwhile, eight premiership clubs and four amateur others uh, will feature at the inaugural edition of the Betsy Obaseki Women's Football Competition scheduled for September the 26th to October the 4th in Benin City, the Edo State capital. The wife of the Edo State Governor, Mrs. Betsy Obaseki, who unveiled the competition's logo at the Festival Hall of the Government House said the tournament is part of efforts to curb illegal migration amongst the girls child. Young people have left the country because they have felt that they have you know that there's no they have nothing to look forward to. And you all know that sports is one area that is so youth friendly. It is one sector that the young people know that they can actually become millionaires and billionaires because they see it happen. When you deal with the idleness of this girl child, obviously they will be useful not only to themselves, also become role model to others. That is what this competition will also drive out. We are also going to use this competition to get younger players and new discovery into the league. And that will be all on Sports News. Back to you, IOTD Balogun. Thanks, Kaide. And the main news again. President Muhammadu Buhari today visited the family of late elder statesman Ahmed Joda in Adamawa State and attended his son's wedding in Kano, that's in Kano State. And of course, two first class traditional rulers set for coronation tomorrow the 21st Ulu of Wari Omobashola Amiko and the second Emir of Bichi Al Haji Nasir Ado Bayer. That's the news at 10. Many thanks for watching. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun from all of us here. It's good night. Stay safe and have a blessed weekend.